Hi, I'm Bob Moore. I am a software engineer with Alpha, and I've got a very important video for you today. This is for all Alpha developers that are building iOS PhoneGap apps. So all iOS PhoneGap apps, by default, have always used a UI web view to display and process the HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript that make up your app. A UI web view is, is simply a frameless WebKit browser, and PhoneGap acts as a bridge to the native device functionality. So you can build your apps that access the device's underlying native frameworks and hardware, allowing you to build an HTML5-based app that can scan a barcode or take a picture or return GPS coordinates, etc. As of April 1st, 2020, all new iOS apps submitted to the Apple App Store that use web views and all PhoneGap Cordova apps do. Those apps must use a WK web view for improved security and reliability. As of December 2020, all app updates must use a WK web view. So uh, if you've got an app that's currently published in the Apple App Store, you've got to make sure that by December 2020, you've updated it to use the WK web view. As many of you know, Alpha's been working on a custom PhoneGap Cordova Alpha WK WebView plugin for some time. And this plugin replaces the deprecated UI WebView that's the basis of all iOS Cordova PhoneGap apps. While offering enhanced security and fast JavaScript execution, there have been a lot of issues that needed to be addressed to allow the WK WebView to run as we require with Alpha Anywhere and Cordova PhoneGap. A standard iOS WK WebView does not allow JavaScript access to the local device file system. Forget about instant update. Forget about storing documents on the device. It doesn't allow it. It doesn't allow Ajax callbacks. It does not persist cookies that the server may return. There's a long list of issues, and it goes on and on. But we've worked through those issues, and the Alpha WK WebView plugin resolves all of the known issues that we've been able to identify and it's been working reliably for some time now. It's tightly integrated with our server requirements and it gives Alpha a significant advantage in the iOS Cordova PhoneGap development space. Now as of April 30th, 2020, all iPhone apps submitted to the App Store must be built with iOS 13 SDK or later. This is supported by Xcode version 11, and this is not the version that PhoneGap Build is using in its latest build. Adobe has publicly stated that PhoneGap Build is now in maintenance mode. Isn't that nice? And suggests that developers look for other solutions to build iOS apps that require the iOS 13 SDK. So, these requirements are going to require you to start building iOS apps with Xcode by April 1st, 2020. There isn't an option to wait until April 30th. And the reason for that is if you develop an app with the Alpha WK WebView plugin and you submit it with the current version of PhoneGap Build, the latest version, CLL, CLI 9, and you submit that to the App Store, the app's going to get rejected because the version of Cordova PhoneGap that's supported by PhoneGap Build is release 5.0.1. That's the Cordova iOS release. And it has UI WebView reference strings in the core Cordova PhoneGap code. So when Apple scans the submitted code, uh, the app's going to be flagged as an app that contains a UI WebView, and it's going to be rejected by Apple. The only way to submit a new Cordova PhoneGap app is to use the latest release of Cordova iOS, which is 5.1.1. And these apps can only be built with the latest command line version of Cordova. So this you install on a Mac from a terminal view. The procedure is documented in the Alpha Help documentation. Just do a search for the PhoneGap CLI builder. Of course, this is going to require you, the developer, to have access to a Mac. And we know that's a bit of a problem for a lot of our alpha developers are using Windows machines. So I've been looking at some available options and I've uncovered an excellent solution from a company called Mac and Cloud. And the solution only costs $20 a month. So this is for a managed Mac. It's in the cloud and it's accessed from a Windows machine using RDP. 
I successfully signed up for and was able to sign into a Mac in the cloud within 10 minutes. And the machine is preloaded with all the software you, you require to build a PhoneGap app. I didn't have to install anything. It included the latest release of Xcode, Node, Cordova, Git, etc. I was able to build and run the Cordova app within a few minutes in the iOS simulator on the Mac, and I was able to generate an IPA file and install it on my iPhone. Now, there are numerous significant benefits to developers when you use Xcode. You'll be using Apple's latest SDK to build your app. You'll be using their native tooling. You'll have access to a native debugger. You'll have access to a JavaScript debugger. And Xcode can automatically manage and all the required iOS provisioning and developer and distribution certificates, making your life a lot easier. Now you can, and probably will, continue to use PhoneGap Build for your Android apps as long as it generates apps that are allowed in the Google Play Store. But you need to start thinking about transitioning to the use of the PhoneGap CLI Builder and Android Studio. We'll be helping you make that transition with continued videos and documentation. Now in the next segment of this video, I'll show you how to use Alpha's PhoneGap Builder Genie and a local installation of Cordova on a Mac to generate an iOS Xcode app and install the app on an iPhone. Thanks. In this section, we're going to take an Alpha component and we'll run the PhoneGap CLI Builder to build an Xcode project and then I'll show you how to run that in Xcode. It's a simple app. In-app browser is what we're going to use. If we take a look at working preview, what it's going to do is simply display apache.org in the in-app browser plugin, which has recently been updated to work with the WK WebView. So that's our component. It's all set to go. And what I'm going to do now is launch the PhoneGap App Builder Genie. I'm going to select that the build target is CLI. In this case, we're going to use iOS. Now, one of the things you need to be aware of is as of April 30th, 2020, um, we've got to compile with uh, the latest version of the uh, SDK, and we have to use storyboard images. So make sure you do that. So in this case, we want to generate the image resource files, and we want to make sure that we've got it set up. So we're going to be using an iOS storyboard image. Generate uh, iOS storyboard launch images is checked. As you come down, the builder will look like it always has for you. Uh, the version of PhoneGap here doesn't matter because it's going to use the version of Cordova that ultimately is installed on the Mac. Um, and in this case, we've got a few plugins, but notice that we've got the Alpha WK WebView engine checked. Make sure that is checked. And once you're all set, just save and launch the PhoneGap CLI Builder. It's going to generate the icons and the, the storyboards. And in this case, now it brings up a, a window that you might not have seen before. Uh, PhoneGap CLI Project Build Properties. In this case, we've only we're going to only worry about the iOS build. Um, I'm running on a Mac, and Alpha's running in a virtual machine on the Mac. And I have my home drive uh, uh, set up, for map to drive Y. So in this case, I'm going to just put all the files I generate in my home drive, which is ultimately on the Mac. And go ahead and go ahead and build the, uh, the script. This script is what generates the Xcode project. You see how quick it was. It's very quick. And we're done with that. Next, we'll move on and take a look at, uh, go over to the Mac side of things and take a look at where we go from here. Okay, now we're on my Mac and we're gonna run Xcode here. So in my home directory, we see we've got a Cordova projects folder. We open that up. We see we've got an in-app browser under bar iOS files. This is the in-app browser was the name of the project. And in our in this folder are two files, build.sh, that is a bash script that's gonna run uh, and build the Cordova application and the source is all of the alpha assets that were put together by the phone gap builder so from here what we need to do is open up a terminal window this is like a command prompt in dos except you're essentially running unix here <clears throat> so to look at a directory so a command like ls 
will show us a listing of the uh, directory. In this case, you need to uh, do CD uh, Cordova projects. And then from there, we want to change to the in-app browser under bar iOS files. We can do a listing here and we should see those two files, build.sh and source.zip. So from here, uh, I've got Cordova already installed on here and you can check that. Just type in Cordova and uh, minus V that would show us the version of Cordova installed. That's all looking good. So in this case, we just need to run the build script. So we will type in bash. So we're running a bash script, build dot sh and now we'll see the cordova application being built it's going to read the config xml file it's going to find all the appropriate plugins it's going to install those plugins into this cordova application it's generating uh, the full xcode project for us right now and at the end you'll see ios xcode project is created so if we take a look back in Finder, we'll see there's a new folder here called in-app browser. That was the name of my project. And this is the full Cordova project. Everything that's in this in-app browser folder. And the iOS um, Xcode project is going to be under platforms, iOS. This is your full uh, Xcode project. We're going to go ahead you could open either the xcode project file here or you can open up the workspace i'm going to recommend when you see the workspace to open that up that's going to uh, launch xcode so here we are in xcode and this is what we're going to use to build this application I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got the iPhone 10 simulator selected here because that's what we'll run on. But the first thing I want you to do when you uh, launch this application here in uh, Xcode is let's take a look at the deployment target. This is very important. Mine by default is iOS 10.0 and we need that to be at least a minimum of iOS 11.0 in order to strip out all of the UI web view uh, references that are in Cordova so uh, and to run with a WK web view so make sure that that's what you set your minimum deployment target to and you can see we're, we're all the way up to uh, iOS 13.4 so you know if you just wanted to target the latest releases of iOS you could target iOS 13.0 but minimum, you need iOS 11.0. So let's go ahead and target that. Now at this point, if you want to run this on this simulator, this will set the active scheme, and you can see you've got a bunch of uh, simulators here. So let's run it on, on iPhone 10. Um, we don't need to worry about any of our apps signing or all that to run on a simulator. You can just go ahead and run it. So when I hit this button right here, it's going to build the application. And now we see our app running in the simulator. And the other thing that's nice is if you take a look, uh, let me make this smaller, over here, this is the native uh, console. So we're seeing all the activity that's going on uh, within this application. Let's go ahead and just verify that it's working right. I'm going to click on the Apache org button and we'll see that in the in-app browser, we've launched uh, the Apache uh, website. And uh, that's running fine. Just hit done. It'll it'll bring it back back down. A simple phone gap app, but it it shows you the whole process. Now another thing that's really nice about the fact that you're running uh, on the simulator and you're on a Mac here is now you have access to the JavaScript debugger that's in Safari. So let's go ahead and launch launch a Safari. And you have to make sure that you launch Safari after the simulator is up and running. Otherwise, it won't find it. So uh, if you had an instance of Safari running and you went to the develop menu, you wouldn't see the simulator, you know, if the simulator was launched after Safari. So keep that in mind. But in this case, 
we did that and we can see the index HTML file here I'll go ahead and highlight that and now I've got full access I can see all the elements I can see network traffic I can see uh, timelines I can see the console this is kind of nice so watch this when I hit the um, Apache org button I've got a JavaScript console log message that comes across so I can see everything that's going on in my app in JavaScript and I can also see what's going on in my app uh, on the native side with this console over here so that's kind of nice so let's go ahead right now and we'll, uh, we'll just move this out of the way now let's say you'd like to install an IPA file uh, on your device so how would you go about doing that or generating a, uh, a uh, development uh, IPA file that you might distribute to a number of people either through ad hoc distribution or you could uh, you can use test flight or whatever but um, so how would you do that here so the first thing you have to do is you've got to go into your signing and capabilities uh, tab here now in my case you can see there's an issue it says signing for debug and signing for release uh, there is no team identified here okay and so what you can do here's what I recommend doing in this case I've got Xcode configured if we look at it under preferences um, my account my Apple developer ID account is uh, signed in you just hit this plus key and so this is where you'd enter in your Apple developer credentials and if you have a provisioning profile already set up say for your development devices Xcode will find that and just automatically install it which is really nice so let's just go ahead and uh, uh, at this point I'm just going to close this out and I'm going to what you need to do here is it's best to uncheck these automatic manage signing and then recheck them I found that just to be uh, just easier to work with so we're signing for a development team and in this case we'll say this is my team and it's automatically pulled in my certificate so that's for my debug and my release builds now in this case I have uh, the, the certificates but if I didn't have them uh, Xcode can actually automatically generate the development and the uh, distribution certificate for you so it's much easier than it is when we are you what you're used to doing with phone gap build so the first thing we needed to do was in order to generate the IPA file was to make sure to set up our signing credentials okay and the next thing we need to do is go into product and we're gonna build for we're gonna build for testing and that build succeeded and then we're gonna go and say product oh I'm sorry the next thing I have to do notice what happened there I wanted to run this archive because that's the only way I'm going to be able to generate an IPA file but because I'm still referencing the iPhone X simulator it won't generate an IPA file so what I have to do here is click on this and I've got to say I want to use a generic iOS device and so now what will happen is when I when I click on uh, let's see we're gonna go to product we're gonna go to um, in this case go to archive and it's building an archive this is like a, a snapshot of this version of this code this is the version that it just built this is a previous version that I had I'm gonna just go ahead and delete that so I don't get confused uh, but this is my archive version I'm gonna say I want to distribute my app and what I want to do is distribute for development click on next you don't need to do anything here you can just click on next say automatically manage your signing next it's now going to communicate with Apple get the appropriate distribution um, profile and so on uh, this is my you'll see my iOS team provisioning profile here and so this is ready to go now what I'm going to do is export it and you can add this to uh, any folder you like I've got a folder here called iOS app packages uh, we'll just say export that 
and we're done. So now if we go into Finder again and we look at iOS app packages, we'll see actually there's two of them here, but the one that I just generated is this one here. And you'll notice in here is our IPA file. Now an IPA file cannot be installed directly onto an iOS device. It has to actually be processed and pushed through a plist file. And fortunately, there's an easy way to do that. So I'm going to launch, uh, we're going to go back into Safari here. And we're going to go to a, a different website. We're going to go to a website called DIAWI.com. And what that all stands for is Development and In-House App Wireless Installation. So this is a free service that you can use, all right? And what we're going to do here is, let's go ahead and close that on out. I'm going to just move this over here so we can drag and drop that IPA file. Let's go ahead and do that. We drag it and we drop it in here and then click on send. And now you've got a link and you've got a QR code that you can scan in that will install this app on your provisioned iOS device. So that pretty much wraps up. You know, building a, a CLI version of your app with uh, Alpha, La uh, bringing that, uh, those files over to a Mac, running Xcode, building your project, testing it on a simulator, launching the uh, Safari JavaScript debugger, and, uh, and then installing an IPA file on your device. Now, in my next series, I'll talk about Mac and Cloud and how you can use Mac and Cloud if you don't have a Mac to run Xcode and to build your applications. Thanks. So in this segment of the video, we'll take a look at Mac and Cloud. So I, here on my browser, I've gone to uh, macandcloud.com. You can read up on all their different uh, offerings here, but essentially you can run a managed Mac in the cloud. They've got uh, different plans. Uh, the plan that I am using is the managed server, uh, which is $20 a month. That This is exactly what you need to build uh, Cordova apps uh, on the Mac. So that's what I'm using. You can uh, check it out and see what you might like. Um, but it's it's really nice. So uh, it includes Xcode, it includes Cordova, it's all set up and ready to go for you. So uh, this was a really, really uh, uh, nice solution for me, and I'm sure it'll be a nice uh, solution for you as well. So once you go through the sign-up process, they're going to go ahead and provision a, a machine for you. It happens very quickly, and you'll get numerous emails from them. Uh, you're going to need to... Uh, keep track of your login. One will be a login for the console. The other will be a login for your RDP. They're two separate uh, logins, two separate accounts. So make sure you uh, read those emails and document that. And then the next step, we'll take a look at the RDP connection uh, from Windows. So this is my Windows virtual machine on my Mac. And you'll notice I have my uh, RDP uh, setting here. I'm going to just double click on that so that we can connect. Uh, this will come to you in a file. They'll have all the uh, different uh, connection strings that you need. Go ahead and connect here. And now we can see I've got a virtual Mac uh, running uh, within Windows. And what I've done is uh, in Finder, in my documents directory here, Notice I don't have access to, uh, say, the root drive because I'm in a, uh, in a shared environment here. And, but what I've done is created a Cordova projects folder in my documents directory. And in this folder, I've transferred the files that Alpha created. And there's two of them in the in-app browser. Under uh, In this case, I just used the dash iOS file. And notice I did this all, in, I renamed this all in lowercase because I have noticed that Working with Mac and Cloud, 
there seems to be a delay when I hit the shift key. So if I want uppercase, it seems to be a bit of a delay and it can be a bit of a nuisance. Uh, they do have a keyboard that you can enable over here. So you can, you can type on this keyboard uh, and it might be easier for you. Um, but I found it just easier if I can just convert everything over to lowercase. I don't even have to deal with it. So it's the only anomaly I've really seen in working with Mac and Clan. So I've got my files here, and then ultimately what we want to do is run our uh, bash script to run build.sh to build the Cordova project. And then once we build the Cordova project, we want to launch Xcode so that we can launch the simulator and install the app on the simulator. And you can also build an IPA file in the same way I showed you before so that you could install that uh, on your device as well. So we'll launch terminal. Um, and we're going to have to change to our uh, documents directory. Uh, we'll do a listing. We'll see our Cordova Cordova dash projects. Do a listing again. CD in app browser iOS files. Do a listing again. Should see our two files. They're there. I want to verify Cordova is installed, so I'll type in Cordova. This should be installed for you along with uh, Xcode and, and everything else. Make sure that when you build your, uh, when, you, when you select your OS, that you select the latest version that's available for Catalina. It's going to be your latest Mac version. And in this case now, we just want to run our bash build.sh. This is going to build your Cordova project. And ultimately, it's going to build the uh, Xcode project as well. So in this case, we're pulling in the, the plugins. And our Xcode project is built. Go ahead and minimize this at this time. Bring Finder back up. See our new folder called In-App Browser. This is the name of our, our project. This is the Cordova project here. We're going to go to Platforms, iOS. This is now our Xcode project. We're going to go ahead and open up our in-app browser test workspace. Double click on that. That will launch Xcode. And here's our app. Once again, the first thing you want to do is just make sure we're building for the right version. So by default here, you'll notice we're building for iOS 10. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that for uh, the support of stripping out all of the UI WebView stuff and for working with the uh, current WK WebView plugin. So change this at a minimum of 11.0. And at this point, you if you'd like to run it in the simulator, you sure can. So just you've got to have a number of different devices. Let's pick the iPhone 10 running uh, iOS 11.4. So click on that. It's going to launch the uh, simulator and uh, it'll put the application running in that uh, simulator. So now we've got our app running in the iPhone 10 simulator. Simulator. I'll just verify that it's working okay. Tap on that. See our in-app browser load with Apache, which is exactly what we expected. Uh, we can also launch at this point uh, Safari. And I've got the develop menu here. If you don't see that, uh, what you want to do is go into Safari Preferences and make sure that you have uh, under in your General tab. No, actually, I'm sorry, it's in your Advanced tab. This Show Develop Menu in Menu Bar. You have to check that. Assuming you see that, uh, click on Development, and here we'll see our simulator, and we can now launch a debug session. Our index HTML file here, and we can now uh, debug into. Uh, our application, we can see the console log messages, we can see network traffic, we can, um, you know, do a, a run a timeline on it or what have you. So we've got the simulator running, we've got the app running in the simulator, we've got the JavaScript debugger running, 
Uh, we can uh, also in Xcode, of course, we're going to have the native console running here. So we can see all of the communications that's going on, all the different uh, um, messages that are coming through um, in the, on the native side of things. Now, of course, if you wanted to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this now. That will stop the app in the debugger. Now, if you wanted to uh, build an IPA file, you're going to go through the same process that I uh, discussed earlier. So what you'd want to do, again, running in Mac and Cloud here, is first off, let's verify that um, our signing credentials are, are here. So let's go to Xcode Preferences just to verify that I've installed and linked to my uh, Apple developer account. And in this case, I have. And so now I want to go to my Signing and Capabilities tab. And you can see I've got, uh, there's a problem with the development team and so on. So again, what I'm going to do is suggest that we uncheck these. Go ahead and check it again. Enable Automatic. Select your team. And now I'm all set to go. So at this point now, I've got to jump up here and I've got to now select my target as being something other than the simulator. So I'll just pick a generic iOS device. Now keep in mind, because you're running on the cloud, you can't just plug in your iPhone here. It's not going to work. It's one of the advantages you have of having your own Mac. Uh, you can just plug it in, run it, and then you can see you know, the debugger running um, your application on your iPhone. But because we're in the cloud, we're going to have to generate an IPA file and then install that. So select generic iOS device. Um, once we do that, we can now go to uh, product. I'm going to go ahead and clean my build folder. And under product, I'm going to say I want to generate a, uh, an archive, which it's going to do now. Okay, and now I've generated my archive, that snapshot of my app that I want, and now I want to distribute this app. I want to do a development. It's going to get my provisioning profile and so on. Automatically manage signing. And now my IPA file has been generated with my iOS team provisioning profile that exists, exists up on developer.apple.com. Go ahead and uh, say you want to export that. Let's put that in my documents directory. And uh, now we're done here. Let's go ahead and uh, minimize Xcode. <clears throat> Bring up Finder again. And close off Cordova Projects. And here's our archive. And within our archive is our IPA file. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to, we're going to launch, launch uh, Safari. I've got my home page set up to go directly to diawi.com for development and in-house apps wireless installation. We'll just kind of move this guy over here a little bit. And we'll just drag and drop that IPA file over. And go ahead and say send. It will process. Now I've got a link that I can send out to my uh, development team to test, or I can scan in this QR code to install on my, uh, on my device. So that was a quick overview of using Mac and Cloud and using uh, a cloud-based Mac to um, build your alpha application in Cordova, run it in Xcode, uh, run it in the simulator, and install it on your device. Thanks.